At Sir Bobby Charlton's funeral, Prince Williams led the mourners alongside British athletes Sir Alex Ferguson and Gareth Southgate. At least a thousand people, including some of the biggest stars in British football, have begun to gather in honor of the 86-year-old Manchester United hero and 1966 World Cup champion. During today's service at Manchester Cathedral, members of Charlton's family and 53-year-old manager of England, Gareth Southgate, joined the Prince of Wales, who also happens to be the FAS president. Arriving at Manchester Cathedral to head the Red Devil contingent was Old Trafford icon Sir Alex Ferguson, a manager who guided Man United to 30 wins, including 13 Premier League titles and five FACUP winners. As the A-list football players continue to arrive for today's service at Manchester Cathedral, he was joined by current England manager Gareth Southgate and former Three Lions captain and Man U great Gary Lineker. Former manager Leganer Solsk Chair, who managed under Ferguson while he was in charge, was among the other former United players who attended the 86-year-old's burial. Current players Harry Maguire, Luke Shaw, Johnny Evans, and Tom Heaton were all praying. A devastated Eric Ten Hag had earlier sent his regrets citing an unbreakable and long-standing personal commitment in the Netherlands, but international obligations have prevented some of the squad from attending the funeral. Thousands of people flocked to Manchester, the city that brought Sir Bobby so much joy, to watch the sports legend make his last voyage around the city before he is laid to rest later today. Fans gathered outside Old Trafford to pay their respects to the sporting hero left a sea of flowers behind, and the famous football stadium's flags were flown at half-mast in honor of Sir Bobby. While some supporters clapped and screamed as his cortege passed, Others bent their heads in honor of the legendary football player. Following a fight with dementia, Sir Bobby, who made 758 appearances for his club and 106 caps for his beloved nation, passed away last month. Alex Stepney, a former goalkeeper for Manchester United who used to play with Sir Bobby, is attending the funeral and called him a classic gentleman. He was a classic gentleman of football, he remarked who may claim to have won every trophy and everything for England. Following the funeral cortege's passing of Old Trafford, fans are anticipated to watch as Charlton's family and other sports luminaries attend his memorial service at Manchester Cathedral. Huge posters of the 86-year-old Charlton wearing United colors were hung from the stadium's facade, and the words Sir Bobby Charlton, 1937-2023 were painted all over the place. Cherished forever, the Holy Trinity statue, which shows the England hero celebrating a goal with fellow United greats Dennis Law and George Best, will be passed by Charlton's cortege on his journey to Manchester Cathedral. The service starts at 2 p.m., and before that, a United spokesman asked supporters and the general public to offer their respects along the path. Fans flocked to Old Trafford this morning in droves to watch Sir Bobby's funeral present. Many of the more senior supporters had unique recollections of his playing days and interactions with the football icon. Growing up in a house given to him by the club, Michael Webster, now 71, lived in Flixton, Greater Manchester, near the home of Sir Bobby Charlton. As a kid, he remembered waiting on the street to see him as he returned from train. Most days we'd wait for him, and he always gave us the time of day, stated Mr. Webster. He was simply going to the stores like any other individual. These days, it's really difficult to approach the players. He was a really charming man both on and off the field. Currently working as an Old Trafford match day steward, Mr. Webster first sees Sir Bobby play when his uncle took him to games when he was nine years old. He continued, saying, When I went on holiday to Turkey or Spain, I would always take my Man United memorabilia, and people would always just say, yeah, Bobby Charlton, there won't ever be one more. Georgie Best and Eric Cantona were outstanding, but he was truly remarkable. He made Manchester United famous, and I have never heard a negative thing said about him. Chris Burns, 68, first had an interest in United at the age of 10, and he recalls watching Sir Bobby during the 1966 World Cup semi-final. Mrs. Byrne, a Stratford and season ticket holder these days, even gave her 36-year-old son the name Charlton in honor of her hero. I promised myself that I would grow up, have a son named Charlton, 
and I did, a tearful Mrs. Burns stated. She claimed that he had captivated her attention as a young student because of his accomplishment in spite of losing a great number of colleagues in the 1958 Munich disaster. She was raised in Royalton Bridge Wells and started watching United when her father took her on the train in 1969. A photo of her son Charlton meeting his namesake in the 1990s is one of her most prized mementos. I've met Sir Bobby several times, continued Mrs. Byrne, who eventually relocated to Manchester to work for the civil service and is currently residing in St. Helens. More recently, you would grin at him, he would extend his hand, and you would shake it and say, I hope you're doing well, while we waited outside the director's box for him and his wife Norma to come. Because he didn't always answer, Norma would add, thank you, he's doing okay. Another dedicated fan, 72-year-old Frank Worsley, described Sir Bobby as the absolute gentleman. When United defeated Benfica 4-1 in 1968 to become the first English club to win the European Cup, with two goals from Sir Bobby Charlton, Mr. Worsley was in the stands at Wembley. I'll never forget that match, he remarked. I purchased a video of it, and I still watch it frequently. Mr. Worsley, a retired maintenance engineer whose business oversaw the renovation of Old Trafford in the 1990s, was one of 200 supporters selected by the team to go to the 2005 funeral of fellow United great George Best. I simply had to come today and pay my respects to Sir Bobby, he remarked. He did a fantastic job representing the team. Steve Bolton, 65, was another supporter who remembered the club's historic victory in Europe 55 years ago. I'm here to pay my respects to a fantastic, great man, stated the retired management consultant from Nitzford, Cheshire. I've never seen a more charming football striker than him. More recently, Mr. Bolton recalled Sir Bobby donning his Trilby hat when he greeted him at the grocery store. He continued saying, he practically never got booked. He was a gentleman on and off the pitch, a legend simple as that. He was the club for Stockport resident Mike Warburton, 69, who was at Old Trafford yesterday with his wife Christine, 67, and friend Mike Goddard, 69. He was loved not only by United fans, but also by fans of many other clubs, stated Mr. Warburton. Recalling his skill on the field, Mr. Goddard said that Sir Bobby scored two screamers that stand out to this day in the charity shield against Tottenham and Arsenal in 1965. I always think he was driven by a sense of survivor's remorse at having survived Munich, Mrs. Warburton continued. That seemed to have fired him up. He was a super golfer and a true gentleman. On Monday morning, there was a noticeable police presence in Manchester City Centre. Canon Nigel Ashworth will preside over the cathedral service, which will include eulogies from family members and the club. It won't be filmed and will stay confident. Approximately 1,000 attendees are anticipated, including prominent figures in sport, since United has extended invitations to each Premier League club. UEFA President Alexander Seferin, Premier League Chairman Alison Britton, and past Manchester United presidents and directors were among the key executives attending the end. It is anticipated that each club will send a senior representative to honour one of the greatest football players England has ever produced. All current United captains, as well as notable previous players like the class of 92, have been invited to the service. The Glazer family, the club's unpopular owners, has decided to abstain as well, citing fear of crowd abuse. Legends from the sports world, such as Daley Thompson, a past Olympic champion, are also anticipated. In the lead-up to his burial this afternoon, Tommy Charlton, the lone surviving sibling of Sir Bobby, said, He was a legend to me, but he was my big brother. Tommy Charlton, 77, thinks the hero from 1966 is in heaven with their elder brother Jap Charlton. Tommy Charlton described him as his big brother to the BBC. Those are my favorite recollections of him as a sibling. When you would see him at the game, Bob would adjust your jacket, straighten your tie, and tell you that your shirt should have been a different color. I cherished being a brother in that way. In addition to his two daughters, Suzanne and Andrea, and their grandchildren, Sir Bobby is survived by his wife, Lady Norma.
the talented football player who was born on October 11, 1937, in Ashington, Northumberland, is regarded by many as one of the best players to have ever played the game and was a key component in England's World Cup victory in 1966. The only member of the team remaining alive after his passing is Sir Jeff Hurst, who is most known for scoring a hat-trick in England's 4-2 triumph over West Germany at Wembley. George Cohen, a former right-back for England, passed away in December at the age of 83. The family of Sir Bobby, who survived the 1958 Munich aviation catastrophe and went on to have an incredible career, released the following statement. It is with great sadness that we share the news that Sir Bobby passed peacefully in the early hours of Saturday morning. His relatives surrounded him. The many people who have loved and supported him, as well as everyone who has helped with his care, are all appreciated by his family. At this point, we would ask that the family's privacy be maintained. Words cannot express how sad we are for one of the greatest and most adored players in our club's history. Manchester United declared, while England called Charlton a genuine legend of our game. Charlton had previously held the record for both England and United's all-time top goal scorer. David Beckham, a legend at United, described Charlton as truly a national hero. Because his father was such a big fan of the 1968 European Cup champion, Beckham was given the middle name Robert as he rose through the ranks at Manchester United, having attended Bobby Charlton's soccer school. It was all started by Sir Bobby. I would never have been able to play for Manchester United without Sir Bobby. I am eternally appreciative of a man who inspired my name. He was a role model and a global hero, not just in Manchester and the nation where he won the World Cup in 1966, Beckham wrote on Instagram. A real family man, a great gentleman, and a national hero. Not only is today depressing for England and Manchester United, but it's also depressing for football and everything Sir Bobby stood for. Today our hearts are heavy with sadness for Lady Norma, their daughters, and their grandchildren. Rest in peace, Sir Bobby X at the rate Manchester United at the rate England. We will never forget him and all of football, said Sir Jeff Hurst. In a private social media message, FA President Prince William called Sir Bobby Charlton a true great who will be remembered forever. Sir Bobby Charlton declared the Prince of Wales, winner of the first Divin, champion of Euro, world-winning team, respected Sir, myth, a real legend who will live on in memory forever. I'm grateful, Sir Bobby, the homage on X, formerly known as Twitter, said, W. Hailed as one of the game's greatest players by Prime Minister Rishi Sunak. As the second half of Saturday's 3 p.m. kickoffs got about to begin, news of Charlton's passing broke, and Manchester City manager Pep Guardiola expressed his tribute after his team defeated Brighton 2 1. These football players and personalities represent English football like no one else can, he continued, speaking on behalf of the Manchester City family, his family the Man United family, and England football. We all send our condolences, especially to his family. We'll be there to pay our first homage when we visit Old Trafford next week. One of the many reasons I adore this nation is the way they preserve the history of every sports team. They travel, represent the club, and are a part of it. In my opinion, Sir Bobby Charlton was the best representative of Manchester United and English football. Michael Carrick, the manager of Middlesbrough and a former midfielder for Manchester United, expressed his devastation upon learning of Charlton's passing. My thoughts went back to the moments I shared with Bobby, an incredible guy and such an iconic figure. You don't usually get those in international football, he revealed. He showed nothing but pure support for us in his blazer and suit, and he cared so much about the players and the club in a Manchester United family. He was pleased to impart his knowledge of what it meant to play for Manchester United. He could have just been a figure, but instead he had an amazing career, and it is quite inspiring that he was able to be modest enough to share that with the players in order to assist him. Since receiving a dementia diagnosis in November 2020, just four months after the 85-year-old death of his older brother Jack Charlton, Another 1966 hero Sir Bobby has distanced himself from the public eye.
The brothers are well known for having a severe conflict for many years, but they eventually reconciled. But because of his illness, Sir Bobby was unable to attend his brother's burial. He was last seen bravely standing for a COVID-19 jab in public to inspire others to follow suit. Sir Bobby, together with his brother, Nobby Stiles, Ray Wilson, and Martin Peters, were the five English 1966 champions who suffered from Demen. The midfielder, who began playing for United as a youngster in 1953, had an incredible career after surviving the Munich Air tragedy, which claimed the lives of 23 people overall and eight of United's Busby babes at the age of 20. During his illustrious 17-year tenure at United, he led the Red Devils to become the first English club to win the European Cup, won three league titles, and the FA Cup. He played with the attitude of a player playing for his fallen teammates. Known for his explosive shooting and unique hair kit, Sir Bobby scored 249 goals for Manchester United, including two in the historic victory over Benfica in the 1968 European Cup final. Along with George Best and Dennis Law, Charlton is a member of the Holy Trinity, as they are depicted in a statue outside of Old Trafford. In 2016, he also received the South Stand, located across from the Sir Alex Ferguson Stand, at the famous stadium bearing his name. In addition, Sir Bobby scored 49 goals for his nation, and was awarded the Ballon d'Or in 1966 for his contribution to England's World Cup victory. Following his passing, England posted a tribute, stating, We have learned of Sir Bobby Charlton's passing with a heavy heart. A key member of the FIFA World Cup winning team in 1966, Sir Bobby scored 49 goals and earned 106 caps for the Hash Freeland. A real gaming legend. You will always be in our hearts, Sir Bobby. His scoring records for both club and nation lasted for decades before being surpassed by Wayne Rooney, the great man from Manchester United. More recently, Harry Kane has emerged as England's best scorer. After quitting football, Sir Bobby ran Preston North End from 1973 to 1975 before serving as director of Wigan Athletic. Before retiring from Old Trafford in recent years, Sir Bobby was a regular at United since rejoining the board of directors in 1984. He had been married to Lady Norma for more than 60 years, and every week they would take their places at the Theatre of Dreams to see the Red Devils play and march. Prior to receiving the OB and CB, Sir Bobby was knighted by Queen Elizabeth II in 1994. His intense rivalry with his brother Jack was widely known. In 2011, he also established the Sir Bobby Charlton Foundation, whose goal was to clear landmines in areas that had previously been fought. The way in which Sir Bobby managed the greatness was reportedly commended by Sir Alex Ferdinand. Success can change people, and it's never changed, Bobby Charlton, the former United boss remarked in a tribute on the occasion of his 80th birthday. He is quiet and shy, and I think that's great about him. An inspiration to all who dabble in football. He's never lost sight of his origins. Norma, that girl, has always been his rock. That is a fantastic partnership, and she is an amazing parent. I believe it was because of him that I was hired by Manchester United. Bobby and I used to frequently attend sports, although I don't think he liked my drying. And therefore it was a fantastic start. One of the first people to pay their respects to Charlton was Sir Jeff Hurst, who tweeted, Very sad news today, one of the true greats Sir Bobby Charlton has passed away. Neither the entire football community or we will ever forget him. Beyond just sports, the entire nation will deeply miss him as a fantastic friend and colleague. Jeff and Judith send their condolences to his friends and family. At one point Hurst called his old teammate one of the most gifted footballers of this or any generation.